Uh, this program is, is very important and has provided such a positive impact for all the communities that we've planted in throughout Massachusetts. We started planting in just three cities and now we're planting in over 20 cities. I started back in 2014, so quite a while ago planting trees. We've planted over 30,000 since then. And going back to these communities, seeing some of these trees that I planted seven, eight years ago, they have canopy that shades the whole street. And you see it, the street is more active. I took the job because it's a new perspective on trees. I asked my kids, hey, what do you guys think about this position? Is it, is it valuable? Is it important? Could I make an impact in climate change in this position? And they said, absolutely, we want you to take it. Two thumbs up, take the job. Hi, I'm Doug Hutchison. I'm an urban forester with the state's tree planting initiative, the Greening the Gateway Cities program. The purpose of the program is to increase tree canopy in the communities designated as, as gateway cities. Yeah, we started with, with Chelsea, Fall River, and Holyoke as our pilot cities to test our concept. Gateway cities often have large areas that have very low tree canopy. And by planting trees in designated planting zones within the gateway cities, uh, we can begin to address the low canopy cover and the resulting difficult environmental conditions that, that residents often experience. This fall, we will be in 23 of the, uh, of the 26 total gateway cities. So we are currently at Kendall Park in Quincy, and we have planted in, on the perimeter of this planting a sweet gum, or a couple sweet gums, as well as on the tree belt down further, we have some Katsura trees. The trees were planted by our DCR Green in the Gateway Cities program staff, which includes a forester, two forestry assistants, and four to six planting laborers. And we try to hire from the local community. Trees uh, provide a lot of benefits, especially to a park area. So they, of course, provide um, aesthetic properties, so beautification of the property, just having the trees planted here and well-maintained. Um, they also provide shade. As their canopies get larger, they cast more shade on the property. And they provide wildlife and bird habitat and food sources, so for our local wildlife around this area, and better air quality, noise reduction, a lot of multitude of benefits come from trees. Because this is city property, the park and the tree belt here, um, the city of Quincy will be responsible for maintaining these trees. There's a lot to take into consideration when planting in a public space. Um, there's a lot of foot traffic, so you have to think of soil compaction. You've got to think about what the area is used for. So this is actually a dog park at Kendall Park. So there will be dogs kind of running around this area as well as people. So good to kind of keep a perimeter planting for something like this, keep a nice big open area for, for people to enjoy. So we're here in the Snug Harbor Housing Authority in Quincy. Before we planted these trees, this area was just a wide open field, but we selected a variety of different specimens so that folks, when they come here to enjoy this park, can uh, you know, be in the shade and enjoying the area in comfort. We select trees based on the right tree, right place principles. So we selected trees that could tolerate things like strong coastal gusts, very dry, sandy, well-drained soils, and trees like the bald cypress, which can uh, take periodic saltwater flooding. So when we're selecting trees, we like to take the opinions of the uh, residents in the area and the housing authority uh, property management so that we can best choose the best species that works for all the stakeholders. I know when we're out here at the housing authorities, uh, we're very often approached by residents who are just so thrilled to have the trees in the area and have an opportunity to sit under them. Um, you know, have something to look out at their yard and see. They really appreciate having the trees in their space. So different ways for outreach include us going to your door, knocking on the door, and it might be a couple of foresters with their yellow vests saying that you qualify for free trees. It's no trick. They're free trees and we're here to let you know that you do qualify. So if you don't answer the door, we do leave a, a pamphlet translated in multiple languages. About maybe six to eight weeks ago, I got a flyer uh, in the mail. 
And I looked at it as a, the minute I looked at it, I was like, oh, this is something that I, know, I think I will be interested. So I called and I called up the number that was uh, on the you know, flyer and then stopped making an you know, arrangement to have somebody come out, you know, to the backyard to see what might, you know, where it might be ideal uh, to uh, plant certain trees. So when we show up to a property and we're chatting with the residents, uh, we always look at what is existing, what is already here, what kind of trees, what kind of hardscaping there is, and how they use their property, and if they have any future plans on how, to, what, how they want to use the backyard. Shade is important to residents because uh, in the urban environment, and the built environment, there is a lot of built infrastructure like asphalt and roads and concrete that absorbs heat more than things like lawns and forests do. So that heats up more and it holds on to heat longer in the urban environment. And this causes the urban heat island effect. This ends up with residents having to spend more money to cool their homes. So when we plant trees, it creates shade to help reduce their energy usage and in turn reduce the amount that they have to spend on energy. We also consider things underground, such as water, electric, and sewer, or things above ground already, such as power lines. These are all things that we consider uh, making sure we pick the right tree for the right spot. Well, I always love nature. Uh, I like to have some trees. So, as you can see, I got some uh, bird feeder in the back here. So uh, I thought that you know, a little more trees you know, would help nature to my backyard. Yeah? Based on how the homeowner's property looked in his backyard, I just suggested that he have planted a Japanese tree lilac, a stewardia, a black gum, and a magnolia tree. So two of those are smaller, one of them is bigger, and one of them is a medium-sized tree. So the homeowner is responsible for the care and maintenance for the trees after we plant them. The only thing that we ask is that for two years after they're planted, that uh, you water them every week. Yeah, I already referred these guys to my neighbor next door, uh, Stephen, and I think they're pretty interested. And also told my parents about it, and they're gonna be coming over tonight, and I'm gonna show them. Um, so as it turned out, it's actually even better than I thought. So I'm really happy about it. You get to meet a lot of different people from a lot of different walks of life, and you get to come in and give them, you know, plant them trees and, and see them grow, and, and they enjoy it in their yards, and we always enjoy working with them. So it's just a great program for everyone involved. So one thing that I love about my job is fulfilling the ethical obligation that I feel that our generation has for our future generations, and that is to plant trees to help mitigate the effects of climate change so that they have a habitable planet in the future. People are out more, people are playing more, enjoying their lives more. So to be able to plant trees, to be able to help you know, all of, our, all of our local communities just as they grow through time is such an amazing feeling.